Good evening and welcome to Lockdown in Perspective is There Hope, where some students are going to share their isolation experience. Um, we hope this event is interesting to you and if you have any questions about what you hear, please feel free to message the Facebook page um, or to click the feedback link down below. Um, the first student we have who's going to share their lockdown experience or their isolation experience with us is Joel. So Joel, tell us a little bit, a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? How are you finding uni so far? So uh, hello guys, I'm, my name's Joel. Um, I come from Reading. Um, I'm studying chemistry um, and I'm in my first year here. Um, my evening experience has been interesting. Um, honestly, I didn't know what I was going to expect, to be honest. So it's been a bit all up in the air about that sort of thing, but I'm coping pretty well with it. Um, obviously, it's difficult, but I'm coping with it. Yeah, how's your how's your 2020 been in general? It's been a pretty so, weird year for all of us, but how have you found it? So it's been a bit, bit of an odd year as, a, as is for most of us, I reckon. Um, so I've been working, well, I was working for the first three and a bit months um, as a labourer. Um, obviously my work got shut down due to COVID, so I was on furlough for about three months. Um, yeah, it's really odd. Um, I really did miss seeing people because it's I'm an only child and it was just me and my mum and my dad. And obviously, it's nice to talk to your parents, but living with them for like four months straight, you know, you do get you do miss a bit of social interaction, which is quite difficult for me. Um, but yeah, mm. it was the same for me. I'm an only child as well, so I ended up coming home and seeing at home with my parents for six months. And obviously, I love them, but six months is an awful long time um so how did you end up using the almost infinite amount of free time that you'd accumulated so uh yeah so since i work as a laborer my dad was quite keen for me to do jobs around the house i mean he even tried doing a bit of bricklaying not skilled like please do not ask me to build you a wall because i mean it, to be fair it hasn't fallen down yet <laughs> but yeah so uh yeah, if you want bricklayer, call someone professional, not me. Um, yeah. And um, I was, for me in summer, I was planning to go to Croatia, um, but obviously that got cancelled. Did you have any plans that you were going to do this summer? So I didn't have any big plans as such for this summer. Um, I had a few Christian conferences lined up, but obviously they got cancelled. Um, yeah and how how did that make you feel to have these big plans and then have them shut down in a way that was completely out of your control yeah i mean it was a bit weird like not having any, well, having barely any social interaction for four months um but it really did hit me like why like what is life about but is it about the social interaction? Because if it is, well, you can't have any. So that's obviously not what, what life is uh, totally about. It's, it's nice to have a bit of social interaction. Um, and we're built to be social animals as such. Um, but yeah. Yeah, so you're telling us about these social interactions that you're having. So with that taken away and sort of how you've been standing up if you like taken away what was what was then the thing that that would had to be replaced with what did you put in its place so i mean during the very first weeks of lockdown in march april time um i really thought like hang a sec am i building my life upon social interaction is that really what my purpose is in life or is it for something better i mean obviously i've been a christian so i i've known about god my entire life but it really made me think, actually, am I spending enough time with him? Am I reading the Bible? Um, am I getting to know him more? Um, yeah. Yeah, and um, why, why are you trying to replace social interaction, which everyone sees as kind of 
a very close thing but um it's very real with something that almost could seem a bit distant which is this big god figure why why is it that uh he is better or easier to rely on than other things like social interactions yeah so obviously i'm mostly sure that somebody's been let by, down by somebody or somebody's been hurt by another person um, in their lives and obviously you can't totally rely on social interaction because some people will just let you down that's just a fact of life um but obviously god if you get to know him and you see what he's done for other people or other people so other people's testimonies or even just looking through the bible reading through the old testament finding out what the people of israel did and how god never let them down but they let them they let themselves down and they let god down um so I'm, yeah um obviously people have had to massively reassess what their priorities have been like you said you had to slightly if there are people who are listening who have um come to a point where they've realized that what they've been relying on isn't good and isn't trustworthy and won't hold up when a massive storm if you will like uh, coronavirus comes what advice would you give to those people who need something else to rely on something stronger so i definitely recommend go talk to a christian if you know any um go message the cu find out what's going on the cu facebook page go to a cu event obviously reading the bible if you've got a bible if you don't there's a fairly easy easy bible app which you can just download um and you can Obviously, other Christians will tell you about their testimonies, how God's been so faithful to them, um, how he's been reliable, how they've relied on him uh, in their experience. And obviously, in the Bible, you've got well, you've got loads of examples of how God has um, been reliable to so many people throughout history. Yeah, um, if you if you do feel like um, you want to get in touch with some people from the Christian Union, if you feel like um, you're watching this and you realise what you've been standing on hasn't held up in coronavirus and you want to talk to um, people who at least think they've got something that has, then please do message the Facebook page um, and we can hook you up, if you will, with some people who are willing to tell you all about the Firm Foundation. Thanks for listening. We'll be back in a second with another student. Thanks. Welcome back, everyone. I'm here with my next student. This is Kira. Kira, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, I'm Kira. I'm a fresher, slightly older than the rest of the freshers, feeling like a grandma. I took a couple of gap years, so here I am, age 20, studying law with social sciences. And Kira, how's your 2020 been? 2020 what a year i feel like we'll be asked by our grandchildren in like 50 years how was your 2020 i'll just show them this video um my 2020 was definitely slightly different than the norm this is actually my first real lockdown i haven't experienced it before though everyone's saying this isn't really a real lockdown but whenever COVID hit i was on a ship in the Caribbean, not as glamorous as it sounds at all. I was at a cement factory, so every time you walked outside, you just got hit by coal. And that is definitely my first big memory of 2020. Um, 
I was there and we weren't able to leave the ship at all once COVID hit and that was quite a change to life, quite a change from the norm. I had supposed to spend some more time traveling the world on that ship and then all of that was put on hold which was quite a bummer, not a great start to 2020. But I have looking back realized that God was still working and doing maybe more important stuff during this time in my heart than I would have got to do if it had just been the normal stuff going on. I think the main part of 2020 for me has been learning to trust God more and um, I feel like in a lot of my life I was giving God, okay, you can have this little bit, but I want all of this. And God has just been, you know what? I have all of this too, and you need to trust me with it. Um, and that is quite a process, something I'm still definitely learning. But I hope whenever I look back in 50 years of 2020, I'll see it as the year that God really taught me to trust him because with so much unknown going on, so much that we just can't plan for, it's just so clear that God is the one in control. Mm. Um, do you want to talk us through a little bit of your process of being in the Caribbean in a cement factory and then actually getting <laughs> home to the UK? Yes, that is quite confusing whenever you just hear it as a random phrase. I was serving on board the Logos Hope, which is a missions ship ran by an organization called Operation Mobilization, would highly recommend. And I was serving on it for two years during my gap years. And whenever COVID hit, we were in Jamaica. We had already traveled all around South America after Jamaica. We were planning on going to the Bahamas and then crossing the Atlantic. But the two main things that the ship kind of uses is traveling and COVID was like, uh, uh not allowed. And it attracts huge crowds of people like 10,000, 15,000 every day. Also, COVID does not like that. So there was no chance of us being able to continue to move. And the ship kind of went through a stage of wondering what it was going to do so the first part of my lockdown was just kind of spent constantly wondering if we were about to set sail and just stop in the middle of the ocean happily we did not because that would have led to a lot of seasickness but we then just decided to spend a couple of extra months in the caribbean before crossing the atlantic they're actually still there today so it's lasted a lot longer but they're still trusting god and they basically stopped and stopped doing all outside ministry and decided to spend the time just focusing on internal ministry, training all the crew members. And right at the very start of that time, I thought it would be best just to come home. My commitment was ending in a couple of months anyway. So I tried to come home, had my flights and all booked, was so ready, Jamaica to Dublin, it was going to be simple. The day before I was supposed to get that flight, it got cancelled. Turns out that Jamaica was no longer flying anywhere. I was slightly heartbroken. I was very excited to see my family after so long, see all my friends. But alas, it was not meant to be. And then over that time, we were stuck in Jamaica for about two months. And I tried a couple more times to go home none of them worked travel got very hard jamaica is not the most industrious country and yeah they did not have airports open or anything for a very long time but then the ship happily sailed to a little island called curacao which is part of the netherlands like it's connected to the netherlands so they constantly had flights from curacao to amsterdam and i was able to get on one of those and make it to dublin at the start of july but at that stage, lockdown had already lifted. So I missed all the worst stuff. And, and now I just have this drag along. So you kind of had this idea of coming home from Jamaica and then that fell through. So you had to, I suppose, live without plans. That seems like quite a weird thing for us when we, we plan everything. We plan what time we're going to get up, what we're going to have for lunch, what we're going to have for tea, all that stuff. How do you, or how did you deal with not having plans yeah that was 
not having plans was definitely one of the hardest parts of those first couple of months for me because all the plans that had been in place I was so excited for and I kind of had to let those go in my heart that was one of the first parts of trusting God um, and then especially on the ship we literally did not know what was happening from day to day if we were moving country if the Jamaican government would even let us stay there if another government would let us into birth even where we were getting food from was becoming quite a oh no what are we going to do so plans were all up in the air and especially like the day-to-day -day stuff what am I working on what am I going to be doing because shift life for the past two years before had been so busy so crazy constantly go 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 and then just to kind of have nothing I was like oh wow what is left when all of those plans are taken away but the way I kind of got through it was definitely seeing all those things may be taken away but God is still right there and yeah that became so much clearer thanks to COVID. Thanks to COVID. It really feels weird to say thanks to COVID, but having God made so much clearer when all of those plans are just kind of wiped out, it's definitely a positive from it, no matter how tough it was. Mm. So if, if you have God and that's sort of helping you, how does that look practically to be sort of reliant on God, if you will? <laughs> Well, I often say whilst on the ship, you literally see God working every single day. Like even the fact we're there is a miracle in each country because it's not often something that's just allowed for a group of 300 people from 60 different countries to be allowed to just sail in. So in all of those little things, you could see God working and especially during COVID because things were so unsure governments were getting so angsty about whether we would be there because although we knew we didn't have COVID everyone was questioning everything so much so just having someone to stay was God working each time we got a food container or any supplies was just so crazy because it had to go through so many customs and in a lot of these countries it had basically shut down so all of that was just seeing God's provision and seeing his planning was so much bigger than our own. And currently the ship is now doing some humanitarian called a backup, which was destroyed by Hurricane Dorian. And even how that all came together, they're in a partnership with another little ship um, ministry. And just seeing how God had a plan in all of that, that we would never even have considered prior is yeah it just gives you confidence that god's plans are so much higher than our own and yeah makes living life a lot easier we don't have to trust on our own understanding mm. and just as a little final thing if there were people watching who are having plans knocked down like skittles uh what would you what would you say to people who are sort of less confident in their own planning yeah don't put faith into your own plans because they're they're just from you put faith into god's plans and your life will just be so much easier so much better definitely don't give up on planning everything i sometimes do that not a good plan but know that when those things are taken away that that is from god that he has a better thing waiting for you thanks so much kira thanks for joining us uh, I'll be back in a second with another student.
Welcome back. I'm here with my next student, uh, Hyun Sok. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, I'm Hyun Sok. Uh, I'm a fourth year student doing um, integrated masters for general engineering. Um, and I was born and raised in Coventry, so I'm in my house at the moment, my home address. Um, how's, how's your 2020 been? Um, I think compared to a lot of people, it's been relatively monotonous. Um, I've been in isolation since the first lockdown. Um, actually, a little bit before the first lockdown, because I was um, cooped up in my house, finishing my third year individual project. So it's, that's about like seven months. Um, and I've only left the house, uh, excluding my garden, like maybe five times since then. That's, that's kind of, yeah, that's kind of the situation I'm in. So, um, what have you been seeing with the people that you have been seeing those little social interactions? What have you been getting from them? That's a good question, actually. It's, well, one of two things have happened so far. Either it's sort of like everyone, like you try to go to these things, you try to meet people with the assumption that, okay, everything's going to be sensible because it quick stuff. It feels like people, things can very quickly get awkward if one of you starts breaking, like, or sort of, bending regulations and one of you is not quite comfortable with it like you just kind of have to watch them because you can't like touch them or anything like that so <laughs> there's that um this whole like tentative thing of like are we doing the right are we doing this right sort of thing and then there's the other side which is when people would ask me if i want to meet up and then i'd say okay it's possible we can but we need to do a few things in order to make sure that it's safe and then they kind of don't want to, <laughs> in a sense, they either say that, okay, I guess you don't want to meet up then, or it's just like, oh, I guess if you're going to be like that, then it's going to be like too, it's going to be too difficult to maintain sort of thing. Those are sort of like the two sides, I guess, that I've seen. So with the people that you've seen, how do you think they've been, or oh, sorry, a different question, how do you think they've been challenged by what's happened um i think probably everyone has sort of their 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 sense of what they're entitled to in a sense has been challenged like the things that we think are absolutely basic to having like an ordinary quality of life which would have been seeing people when you want to unless they're like deathly sick or whatever. Um, being able to shop when you want to, um, being able to go to work, um, being able to take your kids to school, being able to have an education, like these are all things that we all felt we were entitled to. Um, and for some of us, it'd be like, the material things like the very basic material things that we think that even if okay money is dangerous and stuff like that and we try to like control ourselves for that sort of stuff even surely like something as basic as like education and food and basic living expenses and physical contact with friends like surely those are things that we are we should be able to get as much as we need from right um but even those sort of basic things uh, have been, in a sense, we've been deprived in a sense of them. Um, so it kind of challenges what our values are about what life is, I guess. So how, how, what's the best way to live, in a sense. So if uh, we people us included being hit by these challenges of um, reassessing our values and reassessing what we 
need to survive basically what we need to not go crazy um how have you been responding to to that particular challenge well as i said i've been in the same place for about seven months um so sort of what inevitably comes with that is pretty much zero physical contact um i pretty much as far as i i we i've delivered like 90 percent of the of the food that i've gotten um i mean i can list all of these like things but basically i i had to change a lot of how i lived on a daily basis not as much as you might think because it, it wasn't particularly hard for me at least to do some of these things but definitely on the overall uh i had to change a little bit about what to expect i guess sense how should i how should i expect to do things like yeah that's a good point um so with that and how you've been changing how you've had to come at things um and we're all trying to kind of re-establish some semblance of control over our lives a semblance of how we do shopping how we go to university how we study how we do all these things um we're all trying to re-establish sort of perhaps a control over our individual worlds do you yeah. think we'll be successful in that do you think at some point maybe the virus will slow down and things will go back to quote unquote normal whatever that may be um do you think that we're going to find a way through this that we're going to find a point back where we are in control of our world yeah i mean i guess one of the challenges that i didn't mention was that we're very quick to believe that our way of living is the way that everyone should live or that the way that other people live is the way that we should live like if if you're meeting if you see other people meeting friends like every now and then you think oh i should do the same thing and with the virus like we're all trying to regain that sense of i can do what's normal again like i can do what everyone else is doing and we're trying to do that now people are still trying to do that now and the thing is whether the virus goes away or not whether it fizzles out or it becomes a something as common as the flu that comes back every winter people will still keep trying to do that so whether they succeed in regaining the control of, over their lives it's it's i don't know if it's so much about whether they'll succeed it's about whether they'll keep on trying um because the this virus isn't new in the sense that we've we're having things that are challenging what we think it means to live all the time so in that sense people will keep on trying for as long as they live basically mm. so if if we're trying to control our world and we're not succeeding so if we're trying to manage our social interactions and manage how we meet up with friends and then suddenly we're hit with another lockdown which is kind of what's happened to us now and you sort of come to a realization that perhaps you're not quite as in control as you thought you were. Um, what advice would you give to someone who's going through that, who is going through the, the process of realizing as much as they want to be, perhaps they're not as fully in control of their world as they thought they were? Mm. Well, I mean, okay, so talking from what I personally have done, not to say that this is what everyone else should do, but this is, I'm just sort of speaking as a testament in a sense. I didn't necessarily start isolating as a matter of my own personal judgment in a sense. Um, it wasn't necessarily something that I wanted to do. I didn't look at the chance of isolating for seven months and think, oh, this is going to be great. I'm going to have a great time. Some people are having a great time. 
that's one thing that people haven't noticed. Some people who are isolating are having a great time because they're more used to making friends online than they are offline. And they're used to spending time with just themselves and not with other people. Um, but like I, I had to make that choice of whether I thought that I should. Um, and in that sense, I had to give up the things that I was kind of tempted to think, oh, this is necessary. Like seeing people is necessary. I had to look at the future and think like, I don't know what's going to, I don't know what's going to happen in seven months or 12 months. As far as I'm concerned, this virus, <laughs> like all the way back in February, I was thinking, okay, there's every chance that this virus is going to keep on going all the way until the summer next year, just because of stuff. And there's every chance that even if this wave goes, there's going to be another wave. <laughs> and everyone was thinking, oh no, this is just going to be like a six week thing. Like always trying to seek for that relief in the short term. And I had to give up that sense of like, okay, just got to wait, just got to keep on going until like the end in a sense. It's not really about like what's going to happen at the end of this virus because it's, it's it among with so many other things has challenged sort of what is the value of this world in a sense, like what is the value of the control that we have you can say what you can say whatever about like the reasons why this virus happened in the end, but it, it's undeniable that we were involved in that process. Everything that we have done in response to what's what's all happening, we're we're the ones who are accountable for it. So that's not to say that like there's no hope in a sense. If you think that if you think that, oh, I don't have as much control over my life as I thought, that's not a bad thing. One thing that I would definitely say is that if you think that you don't have as much control, you're in the same position as literally everyone else. If you think that you're not capable of having the control that you think you need in order to live well, in a sense. And I'm not talking about the material, like the material side of it, like health and things like that, because no matter who you are, you're going to die in some shape or form. It might be the virus. It might be whatever. It's yeah, that's just sort of the reality. And, but really when we're talking about how we've been, how we've been responding to this virus, it's, we've been focused on what we're doing. Like, Oh, like, I need to find a way to be more productive. I'll bake bread or, or, oh, I need to look forward to the future and be resourceful. I'll spend all my money on toilet rolls or whatever. We're trying to rationalize a life that we didn't make ourselves. Like we didn't make our own success. <clears throat> we didn't give ourselves the means to be alive we didn't create this world. So we have no reason to think that we know what the best way to live is in a sense. Like we're all trying to, our, our previous sense of what the best way to live is kind of got thrown out the window once coronavirus hit. And we've been trying to reestablish what that is. So if you think that you're not capable of doing that for whatever reason, we're like, we're all in the same, we all live in the same world. So no one, is able to have that control of their lives or rather no one is capable of of living the right way because you're the same as everyone else like you're all you're all like human beings yeah so so with that if we're if maybe we change the word control to confidence if we're we're putting our confidence for the future perhaps previously in ourselves um and our confidence for where we'll be in two to three years perhaps in i don't know our our intellect our our ability to get a decent job and we're kind of being hit with the fact that that confidence is shaky as in that um 
if we thought, well, it's like the the joke that's been going around in 2015, no one got the question, where do you see yourself in five years? Correct. It's, we're probably going to get those questions wrong. And in, in this year, we've we've seen that in a very, very real way that we can't put our confidence in our intellect and stuff like that. So where would you encourage people to put their confidence then? I, I wouldn't have been able to be in the state that I'm in. If you think that's a good state or a bad state, that's your choice. But I, I wouldn't have been able to survive the way I have if I if I didn't have confidence in God, basically. It it wasn't it wasn't the small interactions with friends and stuff that sustained me. Um I I got the chance to to depend on God for my sort of not so much my health, but my life in a sense. It it didn't like obviously being having the virus is it, it feels horrible, but I, I wasn't worried about physical health and stuff like that. It's just life. Um, yeah, as I said before, like there's no point trying to find relief within this world because we don't know what's going to happen in this world five years, 10 years, 60 years. A and the big thing behind that is that if, if you can't find confidence in the things that are in this world, the things that are of this world, people and things like that, it, you need, you need to have confidence in something that is not of this world. And the only thing, like the only person who is worth that control is Christ. Like he he demonstrated to us that he was completely good. He demonstrated to us that he is, he, de he demonstrated to us what is true, basically, like what, the rea like what the reality of the world is, both in terms of how bad we are as people and also how good he is. Um, and he died so that we could live the like we could live the same way through him and you're not going to find that through the traditions and practices of your parents and pa people who have found success like incredible success in this world you you won't find the way to live through them um that these are all temporary things in the end um whether whatever you do survives after you die, they're going to end in some shape or form. And that doesn't, that doesn't make them beautiful. That makes them, that makes them fragile. Christ sacrifice his willingness to surrender to the corruption of humanity wasn't fragility or vulnerability. That was control. Um, and that was Christ's love for us. He, like, he put justice over his physical well-being. He endured all sorts of suffering of all kinds so that we would be able to live. Like, you, like we think that we're alive now without Christ, just doing what we want to do, trying to find all sorts of ways to do what we want basically but we're not alive yeah and he gave he willingly gave us a way to be alive so if there is anything that is worth having control of your life then it's christ basically mm. yeah thanks um if you're watching this tonight and you feel challenged by anything you've heard you feel uh, interested you want to learn more then please do message the Warwick Christian Union Facebook page or do click the feedback link in the description um, or it could even be above um, please click that get in touch uh, we can provide you with resources or if you want someone to talk to you want to hear um, more personal stories there's two ways you can do that the first one being uh, Friday night, there's going to be a testimonies evening, which is going to be people 
telling their stories about how they became Christians and why they're Christians. And the second thing you can do is to get in touch and we can hook you up and people can talk more to you about this, this Jesus guy who is, well, their confidence. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Good night. God bless.